Today we're going to talk about are bearded dragon pellets good? Now we're going to compare these diets on a few things. We're going to look at CA to P ratio, that's the calcium to phosphorus ratio, to make sure that we can prevent metabolic bone disease. We're looking for a lack of fruit. We're looking for a lack of carcinogenic or harmful preservatives or additives. And we're looking for good ingredients. So the first one up is Exoterra's Moist Bitter Dragon Pellets. So the minimum calcium content is 0.8% and the max is 1.7, meaning the calcium to phosphorus ratio is anywhere between 1.6 to 1 to 2.4 to 1 which is okay-ish, it's okay, it's okay to keep the dragon going, but when people feed a huge amount of protein to these animals and they get them to grow at a really accelerated fast rate, I wanna see a minimum of at least two to one in the diet, if possible. So I'm not overly infused by this, really. In terms of fruit, it does contain papaya and it recommends to soak this diet in fruit juice. That has a whole lot of sugar going on to those aquedont teeth. And if you don't know, bearded dragons don't have sets of teeth like we do. If we have a baby teeth come out, we get a new set. They have one set aquedont teeth and if they lose it, they're done. So if cavities get in or it makes holes in the bone, it's done. So we really must make sure that we're not putting a load of sugar into our bearded dragon's diets. Next, let's look at harmful additives. Now, ethoxyquine has been shown to cause carcinogenic effects in the bladders of rats. There are also papers that have shown that it's caused DNA damage to humans working with the substance. What it does is it actually damages human lymphocytes and is actually banned in the EU. All in all, I'd rather see some sort of alternative preservative used because we know they exist. There are plenty of non-harmful additives that can preserve a diet. But I, yeah, I'm not a fan of this whatsoever. Right, let's move on to our ingredients. So in this diet, there is a lot, a lot of filler ingredients in this. We're looking at like rice hulls, wheat, rice bran, and of course, we've got the soy in there as well. Now in terms of ingredients that I like the look of, alfalfa is a good one, but I don't think the single use of alfalfa makes up for it just being a load of bulking, non attractive ingredients to me. So overall, I'd actually completely avoid this diet. I'm giving this diet zero out of five. Don't go near it. Now, Axoterra have a very limited info on their website, but they do have another Bearded Dragon diet. Now that diet does include some good ingredients like Timothy grass and black soldier fly larvae, but its CA to P ratio is only 1.67 to one. So again, it's not meeting that two to one threshold for myself. So again, it's not really what I'm looking for here. Next, we've got the Zoomed Bearded Dragon Diet. It's actually this one right here, but what we're looking at is the adult variety, not this juvenile one that came on the starter kits I reviewed a while back. In terms of CA to P ratio, the ratio is at a minimum two to one to three to one, which is actually really great. It utterly and completely meets my acceptance threshold for the calcium to phosphorus ratio. It does it quite well as well. In terms of fruit, I don't see any fruit in this diet whatsoever. So that's a big, big green tick for me. Now in terms of non-harmful additives, it doesn't use anything that's banned like the previous mentioned one, but it does use things like citric acid, which is a non-harmful naturally occurring preservative used in this diet. So that's fine. Citric acid is actually approved to be used in a lot of like organic food. So I'm, I'm completely fine with that. There's also mixed tocopherols, which is basically a fancy way of saying lots of different vitamin E. They're found in nuts, seeds, healthy oils, I think like spinach as well. Now in terms of ingredients, this one still does use fillers like the last one. It's got that rice bran and that wheat meal and that soy, but it does have some good ingredients as well. So it's got things like endive, alfalfa, dandelion. Now the instructions for this diet also recommend mixing the diet with water to create a kind of mash. That's not gonna be great for the bearded dragon's teeth. They need to crunch down and have hard things scraping any plaque off their teeth to keep their teeth nice and clean. So not a fan of that, but overall it's a little bit better than the last one. I'd give that a sort of 3.5 out of five. Now Zuma do have another diet. This is their high fiber adult bearded dragon diet. Now this diet's calcium to phosphorus ratio is the best one yet. 
it's a 2.6 to 1 or even a 3.2 to 1, which obviously is, is really, really good. I am happy with that and I'm quite impressed with that. In terms of fruit, it contains mango and green banana flower. So I don't know why they've done this. They had no fruit in the last one, which I was really happy with. And their other one, they've put fruit in it. So I'm not happy with that, deducting points for that. But this one, same as the other one, is really good for not putting in carcinogenic additives. There's nothing in it. It's got the same as the last thing. And it's actually using ascorbic acid now, which is just vitamin C. So again, very, very natural, very, very clean. The ingredients for this one are far cry better than the last one. It's got grasses, dandelions, clover, flaxseed. Flaxseed is so good for omega oils. All in all, I think this has a very good ingredients. It just lets itself down with the fruit. If they hadn't put fruit in this, I would be like, this is a five out of five. But no, I can't give it a five out of five. So this has to be similar to the other one, like a 3.5, but, but this one is made to give a crunch. So that will provide that cleaningness to the teeth and it's not gonna to be too bad compared to a lot of mush that's gonna be going into their mouths. Overall, it looks okay apart from the fruit. So I would give this a four out of five. I'm adding on that 0.5 from 3.5 to four because it has that crunch. Because otherwise, I'm, I'm annoyed they put fruit in it. It must be that their previous diet wasn't very palatable and like not a lot of bearded dragons would take up on it. So they've added in the fruit to try and make it tastier to try and get like a better success rate with the bearded dragons eating it. But then that's the other problem of like putting sugar in their diet. Next is Ripashi BD Buffet. With this one, I couldn't even calculate the calcium to phosphorus ratio because they weren't listing their phosphorus anywhere. But what I've done is since the average across the board has been 0.4 or 0.5% phosphorus across these diets, if we go for a hypothetical ratio here and say that we're using 0.5 here, then that would be a 2.4 to 1 ratio, which is okay. That exceeds my threshold of 2.1. In terms of fruit, it's got dried watermelon in it. So again, got fruit, not happy about that, but there you go. In terms of carcinogenic additives, it does have one. This diet contains potassium sorbate. In some in vitro studies, it's shown to cause DNA damage and it may even have genotoxic effects. So overall, no, <laughs> no. In terms of ingredients, it did have some good ingredients. You've got hibiscus, you've got dried kelp, we've got alfalfa, black soldier fly larvae, but then it does go and use fillers like potato flour. So overall, I give this diet a 0.5 because I cannot recommend anyone give that potassium sorbate to their bearded dragons. If I were going to use one of these diets, I would use one of the Zoomed diets. I'm certainly not going to be including them into my care guides and saying do that instead of feeding bugs or vegetation but i think as an emergency someone could definitely grab that off a shelf let's say you're going out for the day and uh, you're not going to be back when the bearded dragon wakes up you could pop some of that in a bowl and it'll be there for when the bearded dragon wakes up or it can be there in emergency situations let's say something happens and you've got no food but you've got that as a backup or let's say you go on vacation and you've got a friend or family member looking after your bearded dragon but they don't know what they're doing so the easiest thing to simply provide it for them would be just give them some of this kibble and then i'll get back to the main diet when i'm back certainly isn't going to hurt the bearded dragon to just have this kibble during that period. I certainly wouldn't advise only feeding a bit of dragon these diets. I don't know what that would turn out like. I don't think it will get metabolic bone disease because the calcium and phosphorus ratios are there. What I'd like to see is long-term study of the use of the product on bearded dragons. If you look at the work from Dr. Jonathan Howard, who went out into the wild and took blood values of bearded dragons, of many, many bearded dragons. So he now he's published the wild blood values of bearded dragons for vets to use as a guideline. I'd like to see bearded dragons fed on this diet over a long period of time and then take blood sampling to see how well their blood values of calcium and everything else matches up to a wild dragon. It may surprise us and it actually gets quite close or it might be as many people might expect and it's absolutely terrible. I don't know. It's quite interesting with 
dogs, many people are moving away from the kibbles and complete diets and trying to go towards bones and raw feed, seeing increases in quality of fur and things like that. And we've started off with our own version of bones and raw feed in feeding live food and vegetation to our reptiles and now some of the kibble diets are coming in. And a lot of keepers' attitudes is, well why would we ever go to that when we're already established on the good bones and raw feed diets? Or equivalent shall I say and I think that is my position but if you are one of those people that have gone to PetSmart and you've got yourself a bearded dragon and your partner or your your mum or your parents or whatever it says no bugs in the house and you have to get that protein and all the other bits into them if you're gonna do that and you're gonna use them no matter what I would use the zoom red ones I hope this video helps some of you subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I'll see you in the next one